It's a big day today. Perhaps the biggest day. My new film fridge comes today. Getting a new film fridge might not be that exciting for most people, but I'm coming up on 36 years old. That's what butters my bread these days. Um, it's going in that cabinet right there. And you know, whether it's uh, putting a mini film fridge in a cabinet or remodeling a bathroom, there's different ways to do it. You can uh, do it the kind of cheap, sloppy, and uh, no attention to detail way. That's down here. That's where uh, apparently every, every previous homeowner of my home likes to hang out. Then there's the really professional way to do it. Good attention to detail, no expense spared. It's done just perfectly. That's where the master carpenters like to hang out. Then there's over here, where you put so much thought into it that uh, when it's done, it's actually kind of embarrassing to share it with anybody, uh, thinking about how much mental energy and time you put in to this stupid thing. That's where I like to hang out. But uh, that's how we're gonna do it. So it's gonna sit on this shelf right here. And um, you think, oh, well, just sit it on the shelf. You're good to go. But uh, that's not how I like to operate. So the good news is there's already power in here. There happened to be an outlet pretty high up the wall behind the cabinet. And uh, I've been waiting for this cabinet to come back in stock for the longest time. And uh, finally got it in, built it a couple week weekends ago, and um, just cut a hole in the back panel so that the outlet was accessible from inside the cabinet. But um, you can't really just throw a fridge in a cabinet because the thing with fridges is they don't make cold air. They're actually a heat exchange. So they remove the heat from inside the fridge and that's what makes the fridge cold. But the fridge, has, the heat has to go somewhere. Um, so it ends up just spitting it out into the environment around the fridge. That's why it's always hot behind fridges because it's uh, dissipating the heat that came out from inside the fridge. And so if I just put the fridge in here and close up the doors and let it run, uh, it's just gonna be dissipating the heat inside the cabinet and it's gonna be building up and building up. And then the compressor on the fridge is gonna have to work a lot harder and eventually it's just gonna burn out. Um, and also everything else in the cabinet is gonna get hot. Uh, so we need airflow. And um, I went on Amazon, found a really cool, uh, cool product here. It's these fans that are designed for like AV cabinets. So, you know, cabinets got a bunch of stereo equipment putting off heat. It's got two fans, one pulls in air, the other one pushes air out, and then a, a real sharp looking uh, LCD screen to see what your temperature is and when it kicks on and off. Um, really cool device. Now I could do it with the fan at the lower left, let's say, pulling air in and then kicking out air in the upper right. That'd probably be ideal because it would dissipate the heat into the room. Um, but I don't really want to see the fan on the outside. Uh, it's nice and slick over there. I don't want to screw that up with a fan. Uh, the good news is, there happens to be a pretty big gap between the, uh, the cabinet and the wall here, which I'm gonna end up covering with a trim piece, but there'll still be a gap at the bottom for air to get in. There's a gap at the top for air to get out. So I'm gonna put the fan in the lower left, pulling air in, then the fan in the upper left, pushing air out, and that should be sufficient airflow. It's a pretty small fridge, so it's not gonna need uh, a ton of airflow to stay cool. Uh, so I'm gonna have to cut some holes uh, for the two fans and also the uh, LCD screen. And uh, the other thing I'm gonna have to do is, you know, if I have a fan down here and a fan up here, the airflow can't get past the, uh, the shelves. So I'm gonna need to cut uh, a pretty big uh, opening in the back of both of these shelves. Uh, and that should actually be perfect because that will create kind of an envelope of moving air, uh, let's say, uh, going past the back of the fridge, uh, pulling that heat right up and out the top. And um, that should be perfect. So we got to get to measuring, uh, marking, and cutting. <laughs> Thank you. 
so uh, slight change of plans here. I was originally gonna put the fan at the very bottom underneath this drawer, but it doesn't really fit that well and I'm worried the drawer is gonna end up scraping against it. Uh, so I'm gonna put the lower fan on the same shelf as the fridge. That may actually be better anyway because I don't have to cut a hole in the back of the shelf now. And um, also that's gonna put the airflow right into the back of the fridge. So that's just gonna give it real nice fresh air. Um, but I don't want to cut anything until the fridge is here. I wanna dry fit the fridge, make sure the spacing and everything is good and where the fans are is, uh, is something I'm happy with. So now we just gotta wait on FedEx to uh, bring me my present. Hot damn! Man, FedEx really beat the shit out of this thing. Some broken things in the back here. At least the glass on the front's fine. Stainless steel had this protective plastic. Better plug her in, see if she works. Don't start it up. I guess we'll let it run for a bit, see if it gets cold. I think it might just be cosmetic stuff that broke in the back here. It's fixable. All right, it's been running for a while. Let's see where we're at. 46 degrees. All right, it's cold enough for my film. Seems to be working fine. I think that'll do just fine. And uh, I'm happy with the placement of the fans and the control panel for the fans and the broken plastic on the back of the fridge. That's nothing a little super glue won't fix. So uh, I'll take care of that later. But now it's time to get to cutting. Yeah, I like that. It's gonna look great. One hole down, two to go. That, no, all right. <clears throat> uh, before I can mount these up, I gotta figure out which fan is the intake and which is the outtake. Which one? Draws in, which one blows out? Okay, so that one's blown out the back. So this one needs to go up top. Okay, let me make sure the other one does in fact draw in air. Yep, pushing air in, cool. This one goes in the bottom, this one goes in the top. The fans, by the way, plug into the control panel by way of a standard USB connection. Also, each fan can be reversed in its mount, and they can be daisy-chained to each other, which allows you to connect more than two fans to one control panel. So the whole system is quite customizable and very well built. I believe it comes in white, too. All right, we're in business. Air coming in, air going out. Yeah, all right. One last piece of the puzzle is there's a temperature probe uh, 
that you connect up to the control panel and that's for the auto on function. So I'm just gonna run that back through where the power cord goes out and then um, I'm gonna have to cut a hole or notch out a corner of this shelf so that the fridge's power cord can go down and I'll just bring the, the thermometer, the probe up that way. Yeah, not too shabby. The control panel opens up a slew of useful features like fan speed, auto on temperature limit, screen brightness, Fahrenheit Celsius options, and of course, multiple operating modes. Who would have thought a couple of four and a half inch fans could be so technologically advanced? Well, it's day two here, and um, this morning I cut a notch in the back of the bottom shelf for the fridge power cord, and then uh, I took a full three quarters of an inch off the back of the top shelf to get my airflow from a lower fan to upper fan, and that should be plenty. Uh, but there's just one more thing I gotta do today before I can throw this puppy in the cabinet. And by the way, sorry for the uh, background noise. Uh, my wife's going to town on her nightstand with a power sander. If you know what I mean. <laughs> But remember earlier I told you how uh, I've put so much thought and mental energy into this project that it's bordering on embarrassing? Uh, well, you're about to understand why. So I looked at a lot of fridges for this. Um, I specifically wanted a glass front fridge because I wanted to be able to see my film inside without having to open it. Um, but I finally settled on this fridge for a very specific reason. Aside from the fact that it's uh, just the right size, I got it because it's a countertop merchandise fridge, which means it's meant to sit in like a, you know, a donut shop or something with their sodas on display. And uh, the reason I, want one of, I wanted one of those is it has an LED light inside, but unlike a normal fridge, it doesn't turn on the LED light when you open the door. There's a manual switch in the back of the fridge. But I wanted this specifically, not because I want the light to stay on all the time, but because what I would like is for the light to turn on, not when I open the fridge door, but when I open the cabinet door. Wouldn't that be killer? And so I went on uh, Amazon and got myself some uh, pressure switches. These are meant for cabinet lighting. And uh, these are pretty cheap and they look pretty easy to wire up. And I'm going to take the manual switch off of the, the fridge here, wire up this bad boy and um, get me kind of a Frankenstein situation going, but it should turn on the light every time uh, I open the cabinet door. Now the great news is I took off the back here and uh, I can see that the switch inside is not soldered in. It's uh, attached with uh, what are called spade connectors. And that's gonna make my life a whole lot easier because I don't need to undo any soldering or do any soldering myself. And wouldn't you know it, I got a whole bunch of spade connectors myself. So uh, I'm gonna make uh, a connection from that to this, and then we should be in business. As far as electrical modifications go, this is about as simple as it gets, but obviously, if you aren't comfortable with this kind of thing, don't do it. Or at the very least, just make sure the fridge is unplugged when you're messing with the wiring. I was happy to see that the switch worked as advertised, and that sparks didn't start flying out the back of the fridge. Now, it would have been real easy to run the wires inside the cabinet, but because I had the extra hidden space to the top and side of the unit, I, of course, drilled a hole and ran the wires along the outside. Just because, hey, I wasn't about to start half-assing things now. Sure, I could have easily mounted that switch on the same shelf as the fridge, instead of way up at the top of the cabinet. And then it would require only a short run of cable, no feeding wires, no drilling holes, but then what? Have that little switch winking at me every time I open the cabinet to get some film? Come on. Ridiculous how happy that makes me. 
my stupid little fridge with my stupid little light to hold all my stupid little films. And I finished the trim piece on the left here, so we're all buttoned up and ready to go. But obviously, there's just one thing missing. Well, there you have it. My overly complicated, overly thought out, perfect in every way badass film fridge. I'm sure now I'll finally feel complete. I mean, my office will feel complete. I've been monitoring the whole system for the past few days and the fridge maintains a consistent temperature of about 47 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not gonna keep your pot roast from spoiling, but it's a fine temperature for my film. I have the fans set to turn on if the air behind the fridge exceeds 85 degrees. And I've noticed the fans automatically kicking on now and then, but not constantly. They certainly don't struggle to get the cabinet temperature back down. I think if I went with a fridge much bigger than this or one that had a lower internal temperature, it might put off too much heat to be in a cabinet. Plus, the extra power draw wouldn't be good. So, although this fridge is small, it's really quite perfect for this application. Compact, efficient, slick, nice.